Hi, my name is Marin, and I'm mom to an amazing autistic kiddo, and I'd like to talk to you about ableism. The first time someone said the word ableism to me, I didn't know what it meant. They explained it, but I still didn't get it. I didn't see it. I didn't live it, so I didn't understand it. Fortunately, I was surrounded by some wonderful and very patient teachers who took the time to share their wisdom, and eventually I began to understand that ableism is the idea that society places a higher value on certain types of bodies, certain types of brains, certain forms of communication, and certain ways of being in the world than it does on others. The world is created for non-disabled bodies, neurotypical brains, and it does not go out of its way to make room for people who don't fit those molds. Some obvious examples of this might be public buildings that do not accommodate for people who move through the world in wheelchairs, doorways that are too narrow, buildings with no elevators, restrooms without handlebars or cabinets that are set too high, Zoom meetings that don't offer closed captioning, or even that menu at that cool new restaurant that assumes everyone can read a teeny tiny font printed in gray letters, that's ableism too. Ableism shows up in lots of less obvious ways, ways that prioritize certain forms of communication, expectations around the way we move or don't. Our schools are full of all kinds of examples, requiring students to keep cameras on during virtual learning, insisting on eye contact, requiring that students sit still in uncomfortable chairs, behavior charts, whole body listening. All of these things prioritize non-disabled ways of being and send the message, whether intentionally or not, that this space was not created for you. The rules we follow here are not designed around your needs. Or in order to exist in this space, you need to conform to my way of being. Essentially, what they're saying is, if you're not like me, then you're not welcome here. But what if we threw all that out the window? What if we stopped asking ourselves, what skills does this child need to learn to exist in this environment? And started asking, what does this child need to feel welcome here? What do those who are different from us need to succeed in this environment? And who does not feel welcome in this space and why? What if we started asking those questions in our schools? So much of our educational system prioritizes controlling students over communicating with them. Our schools value obedience to the rules over building relationships and conformity over connection. But does it have to be that way? What if we stopped asking, how do we change the child to fit in the school and started asking, how do we change the school to be a place that all children can succeed? It took me a while to figure out that having ableist ideas does not necessarily mean I'm a bad person. It simply means that I'm a product of an ableist society and unlearning those ableist ideas is an ongoing process that I still need to work on every day. Fortunately, I've had some really great teachers who are willing to show me the ways in which the world does not make people with disabilities feel welcome. And I will be the first to admit that sometimes those conversations are uncomfortable. It is not easy to be told that the language you're using or the ideas you're promoting are harmful to others. And sometimes we may resist those ideas when people say, hey, this thing you're doing, it hurts us. But that's when I need to take a step back and just listen. Just hear, just stop talking and think for a little bit. And that's when I need to remember that just because I may not experience the world in a certain way, I can still learn from those who do. Thanks for listening. 